Builder here with a quick tip on how to use this 3D printed box joint cutting jig, just like I did on the creation of this box. So this is the jig we will be using. Over here on the right are all the settings for the parametric design, so you can set your wood thickness, your finger width, your finger depth, tolerance if you need that, and tool side size. And we'll get into those in just a minute. So if we look at the design itself, there's this tab right here that sticks up slightly above the base. How this works is when you place plywood into it, you cut out this area right here. And then when you get ready to do the next cut, this tab right here keys into the previous cut and properly spaces out each cut for you. All right, so for this plywood, what we need is an eighth inch to eighth inch. So we're gonna set the wood thickness that we will be cutting to an eighth inch. You can see it got thinner. And then we're going to be cutting a depth of an eighth inch. All right, so now it's shorter. And since the piece that we are cutting is actually 12 inches long, we're gonna go with one and a third inch as the finger width. Another thing I recommend doing is setting this depth to slightly higher than the actual thickness of the plywood it will be mating to. This makes it so that the fingers overlap just a little bit with the edge that they're going into. So rather than having to fill them, you can sand or file it down. All right, and then we would just save this as an STL and then open it up in your favorite slicer and print it out. I recommend printing it in the orientation it comes out facing down like this and putting support in this area right here. And you should get a pretty nice tool. Another thing to note is if you are using this, you also need to start one of your mating cuts on the edge of the plywood. So that's what this setting is here for. If you set this to yes and you look inside, it's completely just skipped that, that distance right there. So the first step is to set up your plywood and mark out which side will have the first cut on the edge and which one will have the first tab on the edge. You also need to mark both of them having the same direction for the cut so that if the jig has any sort of offset, it will be consistent across both. So now it's just time to put it in the clamp and get going. How I recommend doing this is cutting the front edge and the rear edge. This file I use here, the edge file, is pretty close to the same size as my coping saw's blade. So let's make it right in there and just cut straight across. So then after you have the first edge and the rear edge, already cut out, you use the coping saw and cut across. And now you just use a file and smooth it out. It's pretty quick and pretty easy and it doesn't have any blowout because the jig is supporting both sides of the plywood. I like using the edge of the file as well, the side that's got a filing edge, to clean up the corners of the cut I make. Then you just pull it off and move on to the next one. I like cleaning it up with the file a little bit, just remove any sort of burrs or any little splinter you got. All right, and then you just kind of fit it into the next one. Especially when this tool is new, the jig is new, it may take a little bit of a persuasion. Now I'm gonna show you the second way you can cut this tab out using just a typical saw, like I am here. You cut multiple straight down cuts all the way across as you would if you're going to chisel it out. 
I don't recommend using a chisel on plywood, so I'll show you kind of a simpler way to do it with this thin plywood in just a second. And then you come in at an angle and you kind of just saw it off and keep cutting at it until it's nice and smooth. This method is significantly less clean. I, I don't like it, but I can see if you don't have a coping saw, it's a really good way to go. And then just like the other method, you smooth it out with a file and you're good to go. It still comes out just as clean because the jig supports both sides of the plywood so it doesn't blow out. So you don't need to see me do this two more times, so I'm just going to speed on through the next few. Alright, now to switch over to the other piece, making sure to follow the direction and the tab to cut out. Here's that end jig I talked about earlier. Instead of spacing the cut in, it marks the cut out perfectly sized right here on the edge. It doesn't hold as nicely as the tabbed jig does, so you have to put a little vise on it. Just like on the non-end jig, you just cut the very beginning. The very end doesn't have to be cut because it's the edge of the plywood. And then you use the coping saw to cut across. And then a file, and it's nice and clean. Now let's kind of just speed through the rest of this side, and we'll get up into fit up and gluing. All right, let's check the fitment. Like a glove. This might be the best set of box joints I've cut so far. Now it's time for glue up. You just fit glue into each of the cuts you've made on both pieces. One thing to note is as you're fitting it up after applying glue, the wood may swell up a little bit, so it may start to get tight as you're setting and clamping everything together. These 90 degree clamps are amazing for doing this work. I use them a ton when making the box that I showed you earlier. And then we'll just kind of clamp up everything as much as possible. and you let it dry. About an hour is good for the wood glue I have. Um, make sure to read your bottle and see how long you have to let your glue sit. Pull it off and just have a good look. Pretty good, pretty solid. So that's all there is to it. We hope that you learned something and find this very useful. Tag us on Instagram at Builder and Maker if you use this technique and this jig for any of your future projects. I hope you have a nice day.